Hello and welcome back. Today we will have Lecture 2-1 on State Space Representation. The objectives of today's lecture are to describe the difference between modern and classical control theory, derive the state space representation of a plant, and create a block diagram for the state space representation of a plant. So far in this course we have used classical control theory concepts to derive the mathematical model of a control system plant. Classical control focuses on frequency domain analysis, such as deriving the transfer function that describes the relationship between the input and output of a plant, assuming zero initial conditions. Classical control theory is used to design single input, single output, linear time invariant systems by using co concepts such as Bode diagrams, PID controllers, and root locus. The advantage of frequency domain techniques is that it is rapidly provides stability and transient information for design by looking at the denominator of the transfer function, which is also called the characteristic equation. However, there are alternative methods for modeling a control system plant, and this is based upon modern control theory. Modern control theory focuses on time domain analysis, including state space representation or a system of differential equations. State space is more flexible in that it can be used on linear time invariant multiple input multiple output systems with initial conditions. State space provides the minimal amount of information that must be specified in order to uniquely determine system behavior for all time. The state of a system is a set of variables such that the knowledge of these variables and the inputs will with the equations describe the dynamics and provide the future state and output of the system. The advantage of the state variable model is that the input, output, and the internal characteristics of the system are represented. When more information about the plant is fed back, there is more complete control of the system. The two state equations required to model a control system plant are x dot equals ax plus bu and y equals cx plus du where A is the system matrix, B is the input matrix, C is the output matrix, and D is the feed forward matrix. The state variables are the vector X, the input is the scalar or vector U, and the output is the scalar or vector Y, and X dot is the rate of change of the state variables with respect to time. The block diagram for the state space representation of an open loop plant is shown in figure one. Note that the input is U of T, the output is Y of T, and that the B and A matrix go into a summer to create X dot, where X dot is equal to AX plus BU. Then we integrate X dot by multiplying by one over S in the frequency domain to get X, the state variable, and we multiply that by C and we add D another summer so that Y is equal to CX plus DU. In order to describe the dynamics of an nth order system there should be N state variables and this will be demonstrated on some basic electrical systems. Table 1 provides a review of the voltage and current equations for passive circuit elements, inductors, capacitors, and resistors. Recall that the voltage for an inductor is V is equal to L di dt, the current for a capacitor is I is equal to C dV dt, and the current for a resistor is I is equal to V over R. Remember the quick way to remember this is Eli the Iceman. EMF equals L di dt for Eli, and ice, I equals C dV dt. Remember E, EMF is another word for voltage. Eli the Iceman. All right, let's look at an example. For the following electrical network, derive the state equations and draw the block diagram that represents the plant. Assume that the input is U of T and the output is V naught of T. Because this circuit has an inductor and a capacitor, which are two energy storage circuit elements, this is a second order circuit and it will be represented by a second order differential equation. Since it's a second order circuit, it's going to have two states. The states are the voltage across the capacitor and the current through the inductor. So the first state 
x1 is equal to vc and the second state x2 is equal to il so now let's use kcl to derive our first equation which is going to be the kcl equation at the top center node the current into that node is u or u of t and the current out is ic plus il or using the equations we just summarized u is equal to c dvc dt plus il to derive the second equation we're going to use kvl or kirchhoff's voltage law the voltage across the capacitor vc is equal to the voltage across the inductor plus v naught which is the voltage across the resistor so vc is equal to l dil dt plus il times r so now let's solve the first equation for dvc dt so dvc dt is equal to negative il over c plus u over c and then we're going to solve the second equation for dil dt so dil dt is equal to vc over l minus r over l i l the state equations are x1 dot is equal to negative 1 over c x2 plus 1 over c u the second one is x2 dot is equal to 1 over l x1 minus r over l x2 so now let's write these in matrix form here we have our vector with x1 dot and x2 dot and this equals 0 negative 1 over c 1 over l negative r over l multiplied by the vector x1 x2 plus the vector 1 over c 0 multiplied by u of t and our output variable y is equal to 0 r times x1 x2 so this means that our a matrix is 0 negative 1 over c 1 over l negative r over l our b matrix is 1 over c 0 our c matrix is 0 r and d is equal to 0 finally let's draw the block diagram that represents the state space system okay the input is u of t and it goes into a summer positive here and negative here and what's fed back here is x2 or il so the output here is u minus x2 and if you multiply by 1 over c the output here is x1 dot then if we integrate x1 dot the output here is x1 and if you multiply by 1 over l here we go into another summer here's a plus and here's a minus so coming out here we want this to be x2 dot so what's fed back right here is r over l and if we integrate x2 dot the output here is x2 if we multiply x2 by r then the output here is y because y is equal to r 
times x2. In order to create x2 dot, here, this has to be fed back through r over l so that we get x2 dot is equal to 1 over l x1 minus r over l x2. And we know that this line here is also x2, so it comes from here.